table for tabletop gaming. I made this with my friend Trent from Miss Gust while we were traveling around Belgium and the UK. It was a very chaotic build and we had a bunch of projects going on at the same time, um, <laughs> which was very fun. At that point, we were basically living in a makerspace called Nerd Lab. Um, so we had a bunch of friends who were helping us out and without them, it would never have been finished. It was really close though, <laughs> because we finished it only an hour before leaving for the UK, which means that this has never been used. But first things first, it has suffered some damage from travel because uh, we moved it up and down stairs, we moved it in cars, so yeah, it's a bit beat up. <laughs> Like I said, the table has not been used yet. I've planned a D&D session in two weeks, so this needs to be finished by then. I invited Ariane, who is also known as Atelier AG. He's actually a really cool sculptor and he makes YouTube videos as well. So I asked him to make some monsters for this game. And he said he was gonna make a YouTube video about it as well. So when this is posted, his is also probably up now. Wow, the future. Um, I'll. I'll link it somewhere. Then our friend Tom is also coming. He did all of the electronics for the table. And then finally, I invited our friend Aline, who introduced us to Nerd Lab, which basically meant that we had a place to work and sleep, um, which was a huge blessing. So yeah, she's also coming. Now, we designed this table to look cool, but we hadn't really thought of a story yet because we wanted it to work for other things as well. Like it is the right size to play Warhammer or skirmish games like Frostgrave, but I'm more of a D&D player myself. So I would like to come up with a cool story for like a D&D one shot that we can play on this table. Making terrain is fun, but it doesn't always get used. So here are a few tips for making your terrain into stories. Number one, pinpoint your favorite elements. This is the easiest way to start. Just Think about what's cool. I really like this huge tower, so that'll be my story hook. Number two, come up with characters that fit the environment. You've made their home, but who are they? I've got a mushroom infested wizard tower, so of course I need a wizard in distress. Number three, think how it fits into your world. Chances are you already have a D&D campaign running, unless you're like me and you just keep organizing one shots. I have a setting that's populated by thousands of unique islands, so I'll put this big foam block into the sea of many gods. Number four, where does it fit? I usually structure a D&D session like this. Setup, exploration slash mystery, a battle and a discovery, which can be a treasure or a cool social encounter. Usually terrain is good for battle, but I also like it to tease a mystery or stimulate your players to explore. Number five, guess next. This is essential, but has nothing to do with this list. And number six, just a little extra tip. How will you involve, wow, hmm. How will you involve your players? These are your main characters. What can you do to play into their strengths or make them feel part of it? This was a bit harder in my case because we had never played with this group of friends or these characters before, but I invited everyone to bring their own miniature. So I hope that that kind of makes them feel more involved in the story. Involving your players could be stuff like adding extra hiding spaces for your rogue or that, for example, this tree is similar to something that they described in their backstory. I don't know, just make them part of it and have fun with it. Now that I've got the story worked out, I'm gonna do what I love most, making miniatures. I first started some really rough sketches. It's important that they're kind of ugly because I want to brainstorm and not get too attached. I figured out some elements that I really like and poured them into a final sketch that I'll use as reference for sculpting. I ended up with these two characters. Peter the Petty, a clumsy wizard who is desperate for people to think he's cool, and Sporlin, a fungal dryad protecting the nature of the island. They were such fun sculpts. I tried to incorporate the terrain into these characters by adding crystals to Peter's wand and mushrooms similar to the ones on the tower on Sporlin's dress. We're playing tomorrow. After many, many, many unsuccessful tries, I finally got my 3D printer working and now I just gotta paint them. Do I have miniature paint? No, so I guess we'll figure out how well we can 
paint them with just plain acrylics. They're so cute. <laughs> I never really think of a color scheme when sculpting, which maybe I should, but I went for a natural color scheme on Sporlin to go with the tower. I hope that with some contrasting red-green colors, the mushrooms would really pop. Then I wanted Peter to look a bit silly, but his first color scheme had a bit too much gesture and not enough wizard, so I ended up going for the classic blue and gold combo. I absolutely love this gold gouache and I think he looks super fancy. I wanted the bases to blend in with the terrain as well, so I added a similar vibrant color scheme. And because I thought Peter didn't look silly enough, some glitter glue. Reveal in 5, 4, 2, uh, yeah, here it is! <laughs> Okay, um, I recently moved, like I said, we're playing tomorrow, and I don't have a DM screen? I don't know where it is. That's a problem. A DM screen is not essential, but it is essential. So, um, I'm just gonna see what, what I can quickly whip up. Um, see what cardboard we have or wood, and yeah. Whip something up. We'll see how this works out. So, I went to the local makerspace to pick up my 3D prints, um, and they have a laser cutter. So, wait, I need to. So, I quickly whipped up a design, and it's not much, but. It's so cute! <laughs> I was thinking it might be fun to have like little things to hang initiative trackers onto and then I was like what if I make it like a little a little castle and it's so cute I I cannot I also put out stencils so let's just make it a little bit cooler <laughs> So it's very hard to film NDM, but we had a lot of fun on our DD session. The story ended up going something like this. The wizard Peter the Betty lost a card game with Sporlin and couldn't stomach his loss and trapped Sporlin into a magical prison. This caused the local fungi to rise up and trap Peter into his tower. And that's where our adventurers come in. Ayan ended up making four huge fungal monsters and this resulted in two characters almost dying. But they had health potions and determination and managed to have peace return to the island. I think that was a great success. Ariel's monsters looked so cool. If you want to get a closer look at how he made them, you can watch his video on his channel. And I re-sculpted them digitally as well. So you can print them. All of the miniatures that we made for this session, you can get on my GoFi page. Anyway, it was so fun turning this beautiful piece of terrain into a story and finally use it as it was meant to be used. And I'd love to hear how you turn your terrain into cool stories. Talk to you soon.